Hello out there, the Grand Mistress of Shadow Style JR here, and welcome to the Theater of My Mind, where I take things, stories, and character concepts and ideas that have been stuck in this brain of mine and share it with you. And there's something that I didn't do in the uh, very first one of these when I was telling the uh, story about how Alberea Rosinante became the goddess Lady Darkstar. I was remiss in doing something very important. And that very important something was I gave suggestions on how to create a cleric of Lady Darkstar or of similar nature. I gave a possible domain for it, Domain of Justice. But at the time, there was not a Domain of Justice available as a homebrew. At least, not any that were good. Uh, so what I did later on was, uh, with the help of the D&D Beyond Discord, I actually created a Justice Domain class, and I'm going to start with sharing that with you here now. So, uh, this, as mentioned, this is a subclass for the Cleric. So, uh, a Cleric within the Domain of Justice fights to defend those in, without power from those who would break or abuse the law. They are called by the gods of justice, such as Lady Darkstar, use my own god there as an example, Bahamut Kelenvor, or Amanator, to ensure that the guilty are punished and the innocent are protected. As you'll see when we go through here, I'm, I'm not going to outright read everything that you see on the screen here, because I will put the link to this class in the description below, and you can go take a look at it yourself and possibly add it to your collection on D&D Beyond. Um, but what you're going to see in here is there's going to be a lot of the concept of justice as a force of balance. Um, obviously, uh, someone who would want to be a cleric like this probably would do well as kind of either lawful neutral or neutral good, because their concerns are going to be about making sure that the law... Or, or even lawful good, they want to make sure that the law is upheld, but they also want to make sure that people are being done right by. And that anyone who does again, does uh, any injustice to other people, for whatever reason, that they see proper consequence for their actions. So uh, to start off with, you get heavy armor proficiency as a cleric. No questions asked. You get heavy armor. Um, that That's pretty standard on here. But even when you select this as a first level, at first level, you still get um, an additional benefit. And that additional benefit is you gain expertise and insight. Uh, for those of you who aren't that familiar with 5e or just gotten started playing, maybe haven't come across this before, what expertise does is it takes your proficiency bonus, which is usually an additional plus two to whatever you're proficient in, and doubles that. So you get an instant plus four to your insight skill. Whether it's a class skill or not, you get that plus four to it. So you can build on proficiency and other skill skills there to kind of go in with that, and the reason for that is that insight is good for being able to determine the motives of people, being able to determine when they're lying to you, uh, being able to determine maybe when they're not treating you fairly or when they're not treating someone else fairly. Um, so, again, for the sake of discernment, uh, to be able to help determine what is actually just and what isn't, that's what this is about. Uh, your channel divinity, I believe that kicks in at uh, second level. So your second level uh, version of that is whenever a creature damages one of your allies, you may spend a reaction at that point, which means basically you surrender your whatever bonus action you might have had for the next, but you have your reaction 
to invoke the power of your god is what a channel of divinity does and in this particular case um, this channel divinity reaction allows your ally to resist the attack attack you know take less take less amount of damage uh, per your wisdom mod so ideally you're going to want to stack your wisdom mod as much as possible even if you go with standard array you're going to want to pick classes that have pretty good wisdom modifiers like say Aarakocra and then it heals them for half of whatever's left plus your wisdom mod so they take less of the damage and then they basically get half of that half of that back plus another bit of your wisdom so say that your your wisdom you have it at 18 you've got a class that's got a plus two in wisdom plus five modifier resist five heals for half of the remaining damage plus an additional five so they still take some damage but it's nowhere near as much and in addition to kind of counter the scales on this the attacking creature gets damaged by the amount that they were healed so it really costs the enemy creature for having attacked one of your boys. Now obviously this is a limited use thing because you can't use channel divinity all the time. I believe there's a limited number that scales by level. At second level it's like you can use it twice per day maybe. So it's very powerful but it's also very limited. And when you reach fifth level this power kicks up a notch because not only does it let you heal your people um, but in this case it also lets you save their lives uh, the attacker still takes wisdom plus half the damage but if your ally would have been brought to zero basically down and dying this immediately heals them for your with wisdom modifier which gets them back into the fight and they gain plus five when i say plus five the plus wisdom modifier resistance to all their attacks until the end end of the next turn so if they go down you invoke this channel divinity as a reaction not only are they not dead but it's going to be a lot harder to kill them for a while uh, six level, name for this one, tiny bit of a Joe Walsh fan, had to go with a, Eyes of the Confessor. In the eyes of the Confessor, there's no place you can hide, you can't hide from the eyes of the Confessor. Uh, so, six level, you gain expertise on your save DC for enchantment spells. Remember what I said earlier about expertise, it being double your proficiency bonus? Depending on... Your proficiency bonus goes up as you level up. up. It, like, increases over time. So, you know, like at the very beginning, your proficiency bonus is a plus two. Expertise means you get a pl plus four. Later on, that will go up and up and up. So you're getting very powerful save DTs to every spell that is listed as school enchantment. And this is useful for things that, like, coerce people to tell the truth, maybe. Or that have them do something like drop their weapons and surrender. They're not as likely to resist that resist that now because you're just you're empowered by your god to get the job done. Uh, at level eight, you get the uh, feature in the name of justice, and it's another one of those kind of balance the scales things, um, like the previous uh, channel divinity, because. 
when you hit your creature with a melee weapon attack, you can scooch him over closer to one of your allies. If it goes by one of your allies on the way, that one ally gets an attack of opportunity. So, like, you have your cleric. Morningstar. Boop. Shift him, shift him over 15 feet. Passes by your fighter but buddy. Fighter gets an attack of opportunity. Shink. Boom. And then at 14, the level that power gets a little kick up as well. Uh, because any ally within 30 feet of it can spend a react action to make a basic attack with advantage advantage against it, and any attacks of opportunity that are triggered by, by the movement always gained advantage. Notice it says basic attack. It does not specify melee. If you're within 30 feet and you've got a ranged weapon or some other basic ranged attack, you want to pick up, throw a rock at it or something, you can do that and you have advantage. Roll twice, take the higher. More likely to hit him. Because together, we can be justice. If you don't watch Link Card, that's probably not that funny to you. Uh, anyway, last but not least, we have the level 17 power for the Justice Cleric. Righteous Justice. Righteous Justice. Justice is both your sword and your shield. Again, the ideas of the scales of justice. Balanced. Weighing everything, taking everything into account. Making sure that the right thing is being done by the right people. So basically, unlike any form of justice that we have in this world. Anyway, uh, what, what that does is uh, for one plus half of your wisdom modifier times per day. <laughs> and I had a hard time figuring out how to limit this one. Even at 17, that's a lot of times per day. Uh, especially if you've capped out, out your wisdom skill, because it's basically three time, times per day. When you hit a creature with a melee weapon attack, the target creature must make a wisdom save or gain disadvantage on all their attacks until the end of their next turn, meaning they have to roll twice on their attacks and then take the lower. Additionally, you and all your allies gain advantage on all your attacks until the end of your next turn. So your enemy, until their, until their next turn comes around and fin finishes, they're not as effective in combat, but you and all the allies within your sight range are better at hitting stuff. And again, that has uh, one plus half whiz mod, mod uh, times per day that you could use that. Uh, we're ch charging at a long rest, so basically three times per day, every day, you can do this. It could be argued even that's too much. <laughs> but me and the people in the Discord, you know, we kind of talked about this, try, tried to figure out, okay, what's a sensible limit on this? It is a level 17th power, so we don't want to limit it too much, you know. And that that's a lot of thing when it comes to homebrewing. If you homebrew something, get you some people that you can trust to talk things out with and figure out what exactly it is that you're trying to do and how best to do it in a way that's not going to be like ridiculously broken because you know you may come up with great ideas on your own or think you've come up with great ideas on your own for me it usually falls into the latter category only to realize that maybe some of the things you've come up with need a little little tweak here a little little tweak there you know stuff things, fixes, other people will help you out with that. Extra sets of eyes allow you to be able to see things that you normally 
wouldn't see because you're looking here and they're looking there. So, you know, they can see something wrong and be like, hey, come look at this, and you turn your eyes on it, and you're like, oh, you're right. That's silly. I need to change that. So, whenever you're creating something with Homebrew, again, get you some people you can trust to help you edit. Okay? <laughs> you don't have to do everything on your own. And believe me, it's hard for me. I'm pretty self-contained kind of person. But even that, with stuff like this, you know, I wanted to make sure it was going to be stuff that people would actually want to use. Because again, I saw the other justice domain. It's not good. Their idea of justice is just divine vengeance. That's not justice, if you ask me. Anyway, I don't want to let you think that this is all that this little trip into my mind is about. Because not only did I create this justice domain, I created an example of a cleric of the justice domain. And I'm going to start with an image here, because I actually created an image for her, because I hope someday to actually be able to play her. I give you Sadr or Sadra Darkstar. Uh, the name Sa the name Sadr or Sadra uh, is Arabic. It means chest, which uh, is not a reference to any part of her body, but uh, more in her case, the idea of her keeping her faith closely protected, her allies closely protected as cleric. And she is a cleric of the Lady Dark Star. And before I show you the actual stats, I do want to give you kind of the backstory that I've created for her. Uh, Sadra, not her real name. She doesn't even remember what her real name is because it's tied to a past that she just doesn't want to remember all that much about. And unfortunately, there's a lot that she cannot forget. But... She remembers it, but uh, she tries, and the one thing she has actually managed to forget is what her proper name is. But she was given this name when she became a cleric of Lady Darkstar, became a part of the Darkstar Sisterhood. Um, as you can see, her shield has a seven-pointed gold and black star with a silver moon inside of it, which is the holy symbol of... Lady Darkstar. Very easy for uh, casting spells to just have that there. And um, she is a cleric, cleric under Lady Darkstar because uh, basically she doesn't want what happened to her happening to anybody else if she can help it. And so you can see what she looks like here. Uh, black hair, black eyes, although um, and this is something that I did with uh, Alba Rail uh, when I had her. Her eyes are black by default, but depending on her mood and how angry she gets, her eyes go through the different color temperatures of stars, starting with red, and then shifting into orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, purple, and I think at one point when I had her, like, at the hottest form of battle, I think I had her eyes go ultraviolet to the fact, to the point where they could only be seen by people who had dark vision. And even then, they would just appear like blinding light. But let's talk about her mechanically now. Uh, she is a human, uh, Mark of Sentinel human, from the... Uh, uh, Wayfinder's Guide to Eberron, Eberron on there. Uh, so she's a special kind of a hu human there, and you'll see that in some of the powers that she has. And she is a third level cleric. So I just created her third level cleric. Uh, I used a standard array to build her, which is like 14, 13, uh, 15, 14, 13, 
12, 10, 8. So, with that in mind, uh, she's got a 16 in Strength and Wisdom. Those are the main stats uh, for a Cleric. Pretty good Dexterity at a 13, pretty good Constitution at a 12. So, yeah, you can see where the 15 and 14 went, really. Um, intel intelligence, neutral 10, charisma. She is a little bit abrasive, but she, as a cleric for some of her stuff, she's got, you know, proficiency for charisma stuff anyway, so that kind of counterbalances on some of those things. Not all of them, but some of it. Uh, initiative 1, armor class, pretty decent 17 for that level, uh, 21 hit po points, which is eh, about pretty good for the, that level. I uh, would be more if I'd uh, focused any more on constitution, but I was mostly focused on just making her a decent cleric, and also making sure that she had a pretty good insight, because look at what that expertise and insight gives her. A plus 7 to insight. A passive 17 insight. Uh, for those of you who aren't aware, uh, passive skills or 10 plus the modifier for that, that skills, they're basically what you do when you're not actively paying attention. You know, when you're not actively, like, trying to do the thing thing that you're trying to do. Passive perception is, you know, what you'd be aware of when you're not actively looking for something. Uh, passive investigation, um, same thing for when you're you know, trying to find specific information at a site. And passive insight is just how good you are at picking up on uh, picking up on things just without even trying. How perceptive you are of lies and motive, so and whatnot. So a plus, so a plus seven to insight, especially at early levels. There's probably not that much that's going to get past you. Uh, as far as other skills that she's proficient in, uh, arcana, some arcane skills. Uh, history, because those who do not learn from history are doomed to repeat it. Uh, investigation, plus two on that. Uh, persuasion, mere plus one on that, nah, but she's still proficient in that. And of course, if I get to play her, as I level her up, you know, maybe I'll see about taking things that create additional proficiencies along the way. We'll, we'll see. Uh, Attack-wise, uh, obviously she's going to be using her mace more often than not, or perhaps her spells. So she's got a good plus five to attack on those, although she does have a light crossbow if she runs out of spell slots and needs to stay back for a while. And every cleric regardless of school that they have, has the ability to turn undead. With a DC 13 wisdom save. Um, because she is a mark of a sentinel, um, she gets a couple of two uh, additional actions on here. Uh, Vigilant Guardian Ward and Vigilant Guardian and Swap. And these kind of uh, go in together with each other. Um, the Vigilant Guardian Ward, as an action you can designate an ally as your ward, as the person you are trying to protect. And when that's active, you have advantage on in wisdom, insight and perception checks to make sure, sure that they are safe. So, say, if there's someone you know, if there's someone who's around your party, party who's maybe a little squishier, might want to do this to like the wizard. Wizard, maybe, you know, their perception, their insight's not so good. You can make them your ward as an a action. And then, if, say, somebody tries to ambush them from the side with an arrow, 
you can be able to pick up on that and with the likes of Vigilant Guardian Swap, you can change places with them and take the hit for them, or since your armor class is probably going to be a lot bigger than a wizard's would be, just block it all together. Just bring that shield up and dink! Your wizard stays alive, the person fries the next turn, you're good. As far as spell spells go, uh, with cantrips, now admittedly, now admittedly, spare the dying, just good to have on a cleric anyway. Because it stabilizes them and just keeps them from dying. You know, otherwise they'd just still be losing health. Health while they're down and if they reach I think it's like half their health in negatives they die at least that's how it was in 4e I forget in 5e if it's the total amount of the health negative someone in the comments please remind me on that because I don't want to be giving out false information I'll make sure to you know pin that but uh there's also an attacking spell, Sacred Flame, so you can send out a little bit, bit of Sacred Fire on there. And then Thaumaturgy, because if you're trying to bring down a suspect, you know, just kind of activate your holy symbol, like put your, put your hand on your neck, neck and yell out at them to stop them. Just, there's no real, like, mechanical advantage to it, although your GM can use it to, you know, suggest, well, you're going to have an advantage on a persuasion check because of this. Because, you know, you are sounding like the voice of a god or something like that. And that's something DMs can have fun with. And creating stuff that DMs can have fun, fun with and interact with you on is always a good thing if you're a player. A uh, few first le level spells, um, guiding guiding bolt. You saw that on the attack attacks on there. Like, if you hit them, you get advantage to try and hit them again the next time. That's always a good thing. Uh, healing word, because again, you're a cleric. You're a cleric. You might want to heal. And then, of course, the shield. Shield spell. Why shield? Why not? Because somebody's firing a magic missile at you. There are very few ways the magic missile can miss. This is one of them. You just throw it up and the magic missiles just go doop, 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 on an invisible wall of force in front of you. Which is not the same as the spell bowl, but anyway. And then, of course, Guiding Bolt, Healing World, Word, you can cast, cast them up at higher spots. Although you can do the same to Sacred Flame. But uh, as far as spells for the second level, I chose Lesser Restoration. Why? Because she's a Justice Cleric. She's about being merciful to the people who need it the most. If somebody's been cursed for no reason, or has some kind of affliction on them for no reason, uh, this isn't remove cur curse, that's a later spell, but if someone has been inflicted with something for no reason, lesser restoration. Arise and be healed, my child. You know, that kind of thing. All right, so as for equipment, there's a fair amount of equipment in here. Uh, I'm not gonna go over everything, but of course she's got mace, crossbow and bolt, bolts, scale mail, shield. Yeah. Oh, that reminds me, I forgot to, uh, 
I've got that. Yeah, that's a no. I've got to add in like heavy armor proficiency for that. But uh, yeah, that's fine. But um, yeah. As far as additional features on there, of course we got all of that. Uh, Sentinel's intuition: when you roll for initiative or make a perception check, you can roll one intuition die and add it to the check, which is a d4. So you notice her initiative is plus plus one. Well, what if? Okay, so. Let me get my dice out here. We'll do a little demonstration here for the camera. You're not going to be able to really, really super see what I'm doing, but you know, yeah, we'll, we'll work with it. All right. So you roll your d20. Okay. I got a 16 plus one. Normally that'd be a 17, right? Oops. <laughs> That's not what I meant to do. But, um, but let's say the um, 17, maybe she wants to get get the jump on on somebody. 17's all right, but she wants that little extra edge. Takes out the D4, the little caltrop die, as I like to call them. And I swear to God, I rolled an additional one. <laughs> So that's another one to the initiative on there. So with with our rolls, that'd be an 18. Maybe that jumps her up ahead above an enemy who also rolled a 17 on their initi initiative. So she gets act first on there. Or maybe she was in a tie with someone, someone at 17. 17, they have like a plus five. Five to initiative, so they're going ahead of her. Rolls that, adds one to it, bumps up the line, goes ahead of them. Right, and there's also um, Sentinel Shield. You know the Cantrip Blade Ward, and that's how she knows uh, Shield as well. So I don't think Blade Ward was on my spell list there. And it may be part of one of the books I don't have. Whatever. It's not that big a deal. Okay. So uh, I gave a little bit of the description here. Part of what I was describing here was her background as the haunted one. Uh, and this background um, comes from. Let me scroll down. Okay. Remember here. Uh, I, be I believe, I don't remember exactly where uh, the Haunted One uh, comes from. In fact, let me search that really quick. Oh, it comes from, it comes from Curse of Straw is what it does. Okay. It comes from the Curse of, Curse of Straw. Uh, player options is what it does. Okay. Uh, so usually that's used in you know the Curse of Strahd kind of setting on there, uh, Ravenloft, because Ravenloft's crazy. It, it's dark. It's rather depressing. But uh, I wanted to do this because um, well I wanted to give her a kind of an, a reason to be the cleric specifically of Lady Darkstar because um, Lady Darkstar she has a soft heart for people who had been through terrible stuff because she herself had been through terrible stuff before becoming an adventurer and then later on a demigoddess. And there's also the fact that I like the 
irony of one of her personality tra traits being, I put no trust in divine beings, but she's a cleric of a divine being. In this case, the divine being sought her out. So that's how that works. Um, but um, there were other possessions on there. Uh, from that background, you get a, a gothic trinket, which is basically something you just carry around as kind of a reminder of the silly stuff that happened to you. And in her case, it's a ring of keys for forgotten locks. Why did I bother to do this? I'll tell you. Plot hooks, my friends. Plot hooks. Because, see, with stuff like this, for one thing, it gives you kind of an idea of something that you can figure out with the DM, what might have happened at some point, you know, maybe where you came from on there. But it also gives your DM something that they can spring on you along the way. A ring of keys for forgotten locks, huh? Well, what if at some point, you know, you come into, like, a, a ghost town. And there's this one house that nobody's been able to get into. It, its doors are locked. It's clearly deserted, but the doors are locked. And your general manager tells you something like, You get this feeling you've been here before. Maybe you should try one of your keys on the door. So, of course, with something like that, that either your reactions are going to be, Well, screw you, I'm getting in another way. Or, you're going to be curious. You're going to be wanting to know where this is going, and personally, I would prefer you take the second path on there, because that's playing D&D. &D. The other is just farting around. But this is playing D&D. &D. So you take out that ring of keys, and put in the lock. And it opens the door. Maybe you find out a little something more about your character then. Maybe you find out stuff that might lead your party going in another direction. Or maybe there's something terrible in there that you and your party have to fight together. Something from your past. That's the power of the gothic trinket. And that's the power of why you might want to take the Haunted One background even if you're not playing Curse of Strahd. Just saying. So, yep. Yeah, honestly, that's really the long and the short of, uh, Sa of uh, Sadra Darkstar here. And that's the long and the short of the just, just as class cleric. You can create some characters that are really kind of low-key heroic in, in their own way. Again, for this kind of domain, I recommend that you be lawful good or lawful neutral. I wouldn't recommend lawful evil for this class. It's not that you can't play lawful evil with this class with this subclass it's more that lawful evil at least in my mind really isn't concerned with justice they're concerned with law and order certain certainly because that because you know lawful evil is well pretty much tyranny and Iron Fist and Totalitarian, they're not really concerned with justice. There's a difference between upholding the law and upholding justice. 
Justice isn't just about, oh, you stole this bread, I'm going to punish you. No, justice is about making sure everything's going all right for as many people as possible. Making sure that people aren't being unfairly taken advantage of. Making sure that the people that you care about stay upright. Making sure that the wrongs get repaid. Not necessarily in blood, but repaid nonetheless. So, that's all for this little trip into the theater of my mind. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope I've inspired you to seek out the justice domain on D&D Beyond, add it to your collection, and make a Justice of Domain Cleric of your own. Uh, please feel free to leave a comment on that uh, with any suggestions for things that I might want to improve on, on there, because, you know, if I need to update it, I'm willing to do so. Or maybe if you want to see something equivalent for a paladin. I've kind of been a little curious about that myself. So, until next time, I'm the Grand Mistress of Shadow Style, JR, and thank you for visiting the theater of my mind.